Hey guys, so it's uh, me again here. Um, so I'm not going to be there again a little bit this week. Uh, my son is still sick and, and in the hospital, so um, I've, I'm here by myself making stuff up for you again. Uh, so hopefully no one comes in and sees me because they'll think I'm crazy. Uh, so hopefully you've got your Chromebooks and you're all signed in and uh, kind of ready to go. Um, what I'm going to walk you through here is how to use Google Sheets to make a line graph because that's something that we're going to have to do uh, in order to um, do the lab that you're going to do on Tuesday. And you're going to do that lab virtually as well. I'm going to record the whole thing and you guys will be able to do it that way. Uh, so it'll all work out. It's going to be uh, just fine. And like I say, I'm in here and I'm working hard for you guys and I'm, I'm sorry I'm not there for you. Um, so I need you to go to Google Classroom. Okay, like you always do and open up uh, your class obviously you, if you're period three it'll say period three and not AP Okay, click on that and you'll find in the stream graphing with Google Sheets it might not be the first thing in the stream like it is here because the lab may already be in there as well just find graphing with Google Sheets Okay, once you found it you can click on it open it Okay, and you'll see that I've built a spreadsheet there for you um, so what I want you to do is just uh, open up that spreadsheet. It, it, it's blank. It doesn't have anything in it yet. We're, that's what we're going to do today is fill it in and build some graphs. So click on it, open it up, and you'll see this. Okay, it's all empty. And the first field is highlighted. Now, a couple of things you need to know about Google Sheets. It works really well, but it is a little bit picky. So you have to do things exactly the way that it wants them done in order for it to work. One of the things is that whatever you want to have on the x-axis needs to be in column A. And whatever you want to have uh, be on the y-axis can be in the other columns. Okay, And, and you may have more than one thing uh, graphed on the y-axis, so that's fine. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by entering some of our data. Okay, and we're going to do that in column A. Uh, what we're, we're going to build here is just a simple position versus time graph. Okay, um, so we'll start entering data here in just a second. Uh, sorry if it looks a little bit awkward. I built all of this and was talking to myself in front of the cl empty classroom again and then realized my microphone wasn't on. So I have the video with no audio. So now what I'm doing is sitting in front of my computer and I'm voicing it over. <laughs> so I need to have my coffee. All right, so we're going to put in the top here time in seconds in column A. Then we're going to click on cell B1 and write in there position in meters. All right, so now that we've got those in there, okay, we've essentially got labels for the X and Y axis. Time will be on the X axis because that's in column A. All right, so this is going to be for just, you know, some imaginary object that's moving. So we'll say it starts at time zero, and then we'll just enter in some, some other times here. Right, let's say we're going to measure it every second, All right? So we'll go zero, and then we'll put in like one, two, three, and kind of just fill in uh, that column uh, in seconds. Obviously, I don't remember what I said the first time. I was talking about something else here. There's kind of a big delay in what, what I'm doing, guys. So, all right, here we go. One, two, three. Okay. Um, and this isn't going to work. I tried to do this, and now it's just going to look stupid. Um, I forgot how to put through, how to make it uh, fill it in on its own. And so I'm going to look really silly here. That's not going to work either. All right, we'll just type them in. Four, five. six, seven, all the way to 10. So just take it to 10 and ignore my incompetent typing. Okay, and then we're gonna fill in our position data. We'll say that this object's gonna start at, um, I think I put it in at a position of zero. So we'll just enter in our position data here in just a sec. Make sure that you're filling this exact same thing in on your Google Sheet as well. All right, so now we're going to enter our uh, position time data, or sorry, our position data. Okay, um, so we're going to just enter that in here in a second. Again, not sure what, I, okay, so we're going to say start at a position of zero, and then at time one second, we'll be at two meters, at time two seconds, at five meters, or something like that. So just uh, enter in the data here as it appears in the field, so five, 
Uh, then it's seven, then nine, 12, So make sure you're entering these into your uh, spreadsheet as well as we go along here. So 15, 17, uh, 19, 22, and 24. All right, so now we've got our data in there. Okay, we've got our full chart worth of uh, position versus time data. So our next step now is we need to tell Google Sheets uh, what data we want it to graph, which is basically all of that. So we'll click up here in the top cell, in cell A1. Okay, so we'll bring our cursor back up there in a second. And then we're going to click and drag to highlight all of the data that we have entered. All right, so we're clicking and dragging. Once we've done that, now it's highlighted all the data that we want Google Sheets to graph. And you'll see it's also really important that you don't put any letters in with these numbers. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the menu bar. Okay, there's a whole bunch of options up here, but I'm going to pick uh, insert. Okay, because in the insert field, okay, when we click on that, a drop down menu comes down. We're going to go closer to the bottom where it says chart. And we're going to click on chart. Okay, now. This is Google Sheets new update. It's not good. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're not gonna use this new chart editor because it isn't any good and it always picks the wrong one. So go down the bottom right here where you see my cursor where it says use the old chart editor and click that. Okay, the more we click that, the more Google will realize people like the old chart editor better. And maybe they'll go back to it. Okay, so this is the old chart editor and it's better. So right now it's picked the wrong kind of graph. It's a bar graph. We don't want that. We want a line graph, okay? A scatter plot, and we're going to put a line on it. So we're going to go over to chart types and click on chart types. Okay, we're right now we're in customization. We don't need that right now. We will later. So we're going to click on chart types. And you'll see that some of the stuff is filled in there. You don't need to mess with any of that stuff. We're going to grab the scroll bar and we're going to scroll down quite a ways until we see scatter. Okay, we're going to click on scatter and you'll see the graph change. Okay, so click on scatter and the graph changes to points, which is much better. Okay, and they're in a pretty nice linear pattern there. All right, now we want to kind of fix up our graph. Don't worry about, again, that stuff up top, it's not going to change. Okay, so now we want to make our graph look, uh, look right and get a trend line on it and all that. So go up to customization, click on customization. And okay, you'll see that the title field is there. The title is position in meters versus time in seconds, which yeah, for this graph is probably fine. Most of the time you make it a little more descriptive than that, um, but we'll, we'll leave it for now. You'll also see that just below the title is the legend. Okay? And usually that defaults to the right-hand side of the graph and we'll leave it there because that's really the best place for it. Uh, you can do all kinds of things like change your font and color and stuff like that. I, at this point, we don't need to mess with any of that. It's fine. Okay, so we'll leave the legend on the right, okay, because that, again, is kind of the, the best place for it. And we're going to scroll down to some of the other options. Yeah, you can change fonts and background color and stuff, but we're going to scroll down to where it says axis. Okay, so axis, and you'll see it says horizontal. So that's the x-axis, right? Right now, the title of the x-axis is time in seconds, and we're going to leave it like that because that's what we want. Okay, that makes the most sense. Um, Okay, so we'll leave it like that. Uh, you can change again the font and color and size and whatever else, but we don't need to do that right now. Okay, you can change the amount of grid lines if you want to to make it look like there's more lines on there. Uh, I do that sometimes. So here's kind of what that looks like. Okay, I've put in now. You know this. Those are kind of weird that scale. Now there's a line for every, you know, kind of x value. Right? Again, it's not something you have to do, but it's something you can do if you want if you like the graph to look a little busier. Okay. Now, if we go back up to here, we can do the same thing for the vertical axis. So we just, for the Y axis. So we just click on axis in the field there. It says horizontal right now, click on left vertical, and okay, we can change some of the stuff about the left vertical. Okay, we can change the you know number of graphing lines again, like we did before. It's not something you have to do, but if you want to, you like it to look like it's got more lines, like a lot of lines, you can do that. That's kind of busy. So we'll switch back here to that maybe. Maybe not. Uh, we'll just, we'll, it doesn't really matter. 
It doesn't look like it's quite the right scale here, so I'm going to switch it back. Um, maybe to one. Yeah, that'll work. It's not too busy. It's easy to look at. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Again, that's not something you're going to have to play with very much. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here to um, the series. Okay, uh, you don't have to mess with scale or anything. You can, but it, it really gets kind of messy if you do. All right, so we're going to go to the series. If you have more than one set of data, there would be more than one series. Right now, we only have one data series. So if we click on that, it just shows the one set of position data. Okay, you can change the color of the dots if you want to. You can change the size of the points. I usually do. Seven's kind of big. I like them small. Um, and you can even change the shape of the points. Okay, you've got some options in there. It defaults to circle, but you can make them stars or diamonds or whatever you want. Um, again, it, it, it's handy if you have more than one data series to make the points look different. But on this graph, there's only one series, so we'll just leave it as circles. Okay, if we scroll right down to the very bottom, you see this field called trend line. This is where we get our best fit line, that we get our equation, our y equals mx plus b from. Okay, so we're going to click in the trend line field where it says none. We're going to click there, and we're going to get some options. Linear, exponential, polynomial. This is a linear. We just want a line. That's what linear means. So we click on it, and boom, draws a line. Okay, um, so it's, it's calculated where that line needs to be. Okay, so we now have a nice linear trend line, but you see my scroll bar jumped, and now there are more options. Okay, the only one we really need to mess with is the label. We don't want it to say trend line for data series one. We want it to say the equation, y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to go to from custom to use equation. So click on that, and there we go. Now we see that the equation for this line is y equals 2.44 times x plus negative 0.182. So that's m, 2.44 is m, times x, okay, so that's our slope, then times x plus our y-intercept, b. So this 0.18, negative 0.182 is b, right? So it actually happens kind of down below uh, in the negatives doesn't really show up on the graph, but that's where it is. Okay, so that's our equation for our line. Y equals 2.44x plus negative 0.182. All right, so we would use that to do some calculations and stuff later. Okay, so exactly the same format we were dealing with before. Okay, so uh, we're pretty happy with all the other settings. We don't really need to mess too much with those. Okay, so we're just going to click on Update. Okay, don't click cancel because if you click cancel, it's all gone. You're doing this over again. Okay, click on update and it will paste it into your Google Sheet. So there it is. And you can click on it and move it out of the way. Okay, so just like so. And now you can see both your chart and your graph. Okay, so at this point, if I wanted to, and you know, when I'm doing a lab, I will want to, I'll want to copy this over into a lab report. So I'm going to open up a Google Doc here just to show you how that works. So I click on a new tab. Click here and open Google Docs. All right, so I'm just going to type in here, you know, this is my observations section of my lab. So observations, okay. And then I'm going to go back to my graph, click on it, click the three dots, copy chart. I'll click on that and then go to my document again and press Control V or go to edit and paste, whichever you want. Okay. When I ask that, it's going to ask me link to spreadsheet or paste unlinked. I want to link. That way, if I go back to sheets and make any changes, those changes are reflected in Google Docs. I don't have to delete and then repaste. All the changes will be linked. And that's like the best part of the latest update for Google Sheets. All right. So click paste. And the graph will show up in your lab report. Boom, just like that. And you can change it. You can make it bigger, move it around if you want to, Okay, uh, whatever you need to do. So there, I just clicked and dragged and made it a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, but it's in your lab report now. Okay. So that's what you would do uh, to insert a graph into your lab report. All right, so um, now let's uh, come up with some new data here and we'll, uh, we'll build a second graph. Okay, so we're going to go down to the bottom here where you see uh, the little plus button. It says sheet one, and then it says add sheet. 
click on that and it'll make a new sheet, a blank one that we can build a new graph in. Okay, so I've got my fields here, same as I did before, right? What I want on my x-axis is going to go here, and I'm just going to make up a graph about fertilizer and the number of grapes that grow on a vine. I don't know, just for something different. Okay, uh, so uh, my experiment will be I'm going to test the effect of the amount of fertilizer on the number of grapes a vine produces. So my x-axis is my manipulated variable, and that's the amount of fertilizer. So... Okay. And you'll notice that I went past the edge of my column. I can make my column a little wider so it fits just by putting my cursor up on the border between A and B. Click and drag over, and uh, we got our um, column wide enough now to write in everything. Okay, And I should also put the units in there, amount of fertilizer in uh, grams, I guess. All right, so I'll start off with a control group. Okay, so that would be a vine that gets no fertilizer, but I'm going to put over here in column B um, my number of grapes because that's going to be my responding variable. I'm going to count the number of grapes that uh, are produced uh, based on the amount of fertilizer it gets. So I'm just going to put in, in brackets here the uh, pound sign, okay, uh, which is number. So knowing people know that I'm counting the number of grapes. All right, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to say, here's my control group with no fertilizer. Okay, so zero grams of fertilizer and then, I don't know, we'll go up by, um, uh, let's say five grams. Okay, so we'll go 5, 10, 15, okay, 20, 25, and let's say we'll go up to 35 grams maybe. That's probably lots. Okay, if I put any more on that, I'll probably kill them. So. All right, so then we'll go over here and we'll write in the number of grapes. Okay, so let's say on my plant that I didn't put any fertilizer on, that there were, I don't know, 120 grapes. Okay, and then when I have five grams of fertilizer, I get 135 grapes. Okay, so make sure you're entering all this into yours, okay, so that you're building a, a spreadsheet that looks like mine. So for 10 grams, 145, for 15 grams, 152 grapes, 158 grapes, okay, 158. Um, for 20 grams, hundred and thirty. no, sorry, 165 grapes. Okay, and then for 25 grams, 180 grapes. For 30 grams, 190. We'll kind of flatten it out here because obviously the more fertilizer we add, it could start to taper off a little. And we'll say 200 grapes for 35 grams. Okay, so now we've got all our data entered. Now what we want to do is we want to um, highlight all of our entered data, just like we did on the last graph. Okay, so click and drag, then go up to Insert. Click on Insert, go down to Chart. All right, so again, Google Sheets doesn't pick the right thing and we don't want to use the new chart editor. So go down to the bottom right where you see old chart editor and click on that. So we get this, okay? Still, it wants, Google Sheets has got a thing for bar graphs, right? So we want to go over to chart types and scroll down until we see scatter. Click on that, okay? And now we'll do our customization, okay? So we see we got our nice dots there, okay? Um, so now we'll go back up to customization and start fiddling around with some stuff there. So um, not a great title, grape number versus amount fertilizer. Yeah, that's not great. So I'm going to rename it something a little more descriptive, like, I don't know, vineyard graph. Okay, and if I click away from that field, you'll see that it changes automatically on the graph. All right, now I'm going to scroll a little bit further down. Okay, I don't really need to change anything about the axes. They're fine. They have the units there. Okay, so we'll just scroll right down to um, to series. Okay, and um, you can see it's just one series again, so number of grapes. Okay, we got kind of big points again. Um, but we'll scroll down here to trend line. All right. So trend lines are right at the bottom. Click on linear because it's a line. And 
there's the line. Now, again, you see my scroll bar kind of jumps, okay, but I do have a best fit line there. And I want to change the label from custom to use equation. All right, so now I've got the line and there's my graph. So my slope is 2.25 times X plus 122. So what that's saying is that I get 2.25 more grapes for every gram of fertilizer. I don't know if that's a good investment or not, but that's what the graph said. So, okay, 2.25 grapes uh, for every gram of fertilizer. And, and I had no, no fertilizer, I'd have about 122 grapes, according to the line. Obviously, according to my data, it was 120, but according to my line, it's 122. All right, so we don't really need to mess with any of these other settings here. We've got use equation, that's important. We're gonna click update and put that graph into our sheet. Okay, now we wanna pull it out of the way. Okay, so move it over and pull it out of the way. Perfect, now we can see everything. Now, sometimes you're gonna to want to copy your chart over as well, okay? So you notice I clicked down in this empty cell and that kind of took away all the highlighting. Now I'm gonna click up in that top box and highlight everything again. And then I'm going to copy that. So either Control C, okay? Oh, sorry, I messed up there. All right, so now I've clicked away. Uh, I'm gonna re-highlight that box. If you don't do that, what happens is it, it'll paste everything over and it's messy. Okay, so I just have my chart highlighted. I'm going to go to edit and copy or just press control C. And then I'll open up another Google Doc here. Okay, and just paste it in control V or go up to edit. Okay, and it'll say link to spreadsheet again. You want to do that so that any changes you make are reflected. And there's my chart because we'll want to have both. We'll want to have our chart as well as our graph pasted in. Okay, so then if I want to paste my graph in, okay, um, okay, I, I, what I did here is I made a mistake. I still had the numbers highlighted, so I clicked away from that, so everything was off. Go back over to my chart, copy this one. Okay, so now I'm bringing my graph over and make a little space, control V or edit, paste. Okay, link to the spreadsheet again, boom, there it is. So now I have both my chart and my graph in my lab report. Okay, easy peasy. All right, and you can see, again, I've got my equation there. Everything's showing up really well. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at building a graph that has more than one series on it. Okay, so we're going to go back to this, and we're going to add another sheet here. So go back down to the add sheet button. Okay, click on add sheet. And um, this one is gonna be a velocity versus time graph. So we want time to be on the X axis. So we're gonna put time in column A in seconds. And then in column B, we'll put velocity. But this is gonna be um, a graph that has two different lines on it. So I'm gonna put velocity of car one and I should probably put units there, meters per second. And you can see again, I went past the end, the edge of the column. So I'm just gonna click and drag it over. So it fits. And then in column C, I'm gonna put velocity of car two in meters per second. So I'm gonna have two different sets of data on this graph. Oops, car, car two, oh, put a space in there, two. There we go, meters per second. Oh, type, type, need my coffee here. I haven't had my coffee yet, can't type. All right, so now uh, I'm going to put in time zero, time one, time two, time three, time. Yeah, so we'll just do it every second up to 10 seconds. Okay. Six. Okay, so make sure you're filling in your yours as well here. I want to see exactly the same thing on yours. Okay, and then for car one, we'll say it starts from rest. Okay, so it starts from zero meters per second. Okay, so I'll fill in in there um, my velocities here in just a second. Okay, so zero meters per second after one second. Uh, we'll say, let's make it so that this column is goes up by five every, every square. Okay, so five, 10. Okay, that way we get kind of a nice even uh, graph, even slope here. 
it's a little bit artificial because obviously no car would do that, but we're just, this is just imaginary. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so all the way up to, whoop, whoops, wrong field. Okay, uh, right back to nine and 50 in our last one there. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna fill in car two and I'm gonna make car two a little bit slower. All right, so we'll start it at rest as well and then we'll just go up by three. Okay, so three, six, nine, 12, 15. Okay, just go up by three in every box until you get to the bottom. So we should get up to 30 okay, by the time we get to the bottom box. Okay, so now we've got all of our data entered. We've got two cars now, okay? So we'll have two things showing up on our y-axis when we uh, make this graph. All right, so we're gonna do the same as we've done with the other graphs, right? We're gonna go over and we're gonna um, start in the top box there, okay? Click on that and then click and drag until we've highlighted all of the data, both cars, all of the time, okay? And then we're gonna go to insert, same as we did before. Okay, so we got everything highlighted. Go to insert, down to chart. Okay, choose the old chart editor again. You can see Google always picks bar graphs, but you can see there's two sets of data now. Okay, so we want to go down to use old chart editor in the bottom right. Click on that. All right, so now we're going to go to chart types. Again, we want a scatter plot, not a bar graph. Okay, so we're going to click on scatter. And you can see here we have the two different cars. So you can see that the faster car, car one, okay, has a steeper set of dots than car two does, which was slower. Okay, so good, it looks exactly like we want it to look. So now we're gonna go to customization and we're gonna fix some stuff. Cause right now the layout of this graph isn't really good. The title is terrible, okay? It's car one meters per second and velocity. Yeah, it's just bad. So we're gonna change that to uh, velocity versus time graph, which isn't a great title either, but it's better than velocity car one meters per second and velocity car two. Okay, so we'll change the title in the title field. And then you'll notice I don't have a label on my y axis, and that's bad because a proper graph should have labeled axes. So I'm going to grab the scroll bar and move down to axis. Okay, it's just below where we were. Yeah, you can see the x-axis is fine, says so time in seconds, but okay, I need my left vertical axis to be labeled. All right, so I'm gonna go up to this, click left vertical, and put in a label or a title for that axis, and it's velocity, and it's in meters per second. So I'm just gonna type that velocity, brackets, meters per second. And then if I click away, boom, there, now I have a label. Okay, so now that that's done, now I can look at putting on my lines. I'm gonna get two different lines here because I have two different series of data. So if you see here now, we're in the series area and it says series velocity car one, okay? That's the blue dots, okay? If I click on that, you can see that there's my second series of data. So there's two, whereas in the other graphs, there was only one. All right, so we'll stay with car one. I'm gonna make the points smaller because I don't like big points. And then I'm gonna scroll down to trend line click on none and go down to linear. Okay, now there's my line. Okay, but it says trend line for data series one. I want the equation, not that label. So I'm gonna to go to label, change it from custom to use equation. And I'm gonna predict that the slope will be five and the y-intercept will be zero because this thing was moving at five meters per second. Every second it went five meters further. So I'm gonna predict this is five X plus zero. Haha, <laughs> I am so tired of being right. Okay, so 5x plus 0. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, same thing for uh, the red dots for car number 2. All right, so everything looks good here so far. Okay, so 5 times x plus 0. That means that the car essentially starts from rest even on the line. Okay, so it starts down there at the origin. All right, so let's go back up to series. And now we're going to do the same thing for car number 2. So we're going to click velocity car one, now we're gonna click velocity car two. All right, so now the thing, the color changes to red, I'm gonna make the points smaller and then scroll down to trend line again, make it linear, okay, scroll down again 
and I want to change the label from custom to use equation. Okay, and I'm going to predict for this one that the slope will be 3. So the equation will be 3x plus 0. Aha. Okay. Um, so now we've got our, our equation, 3x plus 0. Okay, and we've got our nice lines on there. So this is working just great. Okay, it looks exactly like we predicted it would. Okay, so now we'll press update and get that into our spreadsheets. And we'll copy it over. Um, into, you know, if we wanted to, into a lab report or something like that. All right, so now it's all set up. So now what we're going to do, now that we've got some graphs, is I want you guys to practice using y equals mx plus b, do some kind of practice calculations with that. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is build some questions for you and, uh, and have you work with those. We'll start with kind of our first graph here because it's the simple one, and we'll kind of move up from there. Okay, so um, you'll probably want to have a sheet of paper out here um, so that you can do these little problems. Okay, so here's our problems. Uh, we've got our position versus time graph, and I want you guys to do these two calculations, okay? What will the position of the object be after 15 seconds? Keeping in mind that our equation over here is 2.44 times x plus negative 0.182, okay? So remember this, the velocity is the slope, 2.44, the y-intercept is negative 0.182. So I want you to do y equals mx plus b calculations Okay, and solve those two. I'll have the sub pause it here uh, to give you some time. Okay, so now let's have a look at our uh, calculations here. How are we going to do these calculations? So we know the equation is y equals mx plus b. Okay, I'm looking for a position. Okay, so here's our slope, or sorry, 2.44 um, x plus negative 0.182 that's my equation for this line now the question is asking what's the position after 15 seconds now position is on the y-axis right here right so i'm solving for a y value i'm given an x value 15 seconds is a time and time is on the x-axis right so our 15 seconds is going to act as our x value Okay, so it's going to go right there. So I don't need to manipulate. I just need to plug in my numbers. So y is going to equal 2.44 times 15. Okay, that's our slope. 2.44 is our slope. Times our x value, 15, plus negative 0.182. Okay, you could also just write minus 0.182 if you wanted to. It's the same thing. All right, so we'll bring up our calculator here. All right, so 2.44, our slope, times 15 seconds, our x value, plus negative 0.182. Okay, so after 15 seconds, the position of this object would be 36.418 meters. Okay, so I just write that in there, 36.418 meters. <laughs> All right, question number two. How long will it take to reach a position of 12 and a half meters? Something asked me how long, that's an x value. 12 and a half meters is a y value because it's a position. Okay, so how long is time? So I'm solving for an x value. So y equals m times x plus b, and I'm solving for x. So I need to manipulate. So in order to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract b from both sides. So y minus b will equal m times x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by m. There we go. Now I'm solving for x. All I got to do is plug in my numbers. So as we said, y is going to be 12 and a half. So sorry, this is really just doing this, right? Uh, change in position is displacement divided by m, which is velocity, equals time. So really, this is just v equals d over t. All right, so back to this. Um, so I'm going to plug in my numbers now. Okay, so y is 12 and a half. Okay, so 12.5 minus negative 0.182. And then I'm going to divide, right? You can see up here, this negative 0.182. Right? My slope is 2.44, so I'm going to divide by 2.44, right, right there. All right, so I'm dividing 
meters by meters per second. See, these are both in meters and the bottom's in meters per second. That's going to leave me with seconds. Okay, so when I punch that in, I'm going to have 12.5 minus negative 0.182, and then I hit equals. Okay, otherwise your calculator does order of operations, so you want to make sure you do that before you do the division. Then divide by 2.44, and it says that that will take 5.2 seconds approximately. Okay, there we go, 5.20 seconds. Okay, and you can see that there it is on the graph, okay? At 15 meters, okay? It's just past five, so just 5.2 seconds. So that's actually a point that was on the graph, and okay? it just wasn't actually a point on the line. All right, now we're gonna do some calculations with the vineyard graph. So I want you guys to calculate how many grapes would be grown if only seven grams of fertilizer were used, and if I wanna grow 300 grapes, how much fertilizer should I use? All right, so I'll have the sub pause the podcast here, and you guys can try and solve those two questions. All right, so how many grapes would be grown if only seven grams of fertilizer were used? Okay, so seven grams. Okay, so remember our, our formula here, our slope is 2.25, and our y-intercept is 122. Okay, so I am solving for how many grapes, and how many grapes is a y value, okay? Seven grams of fertilizer is an x value. Okay, so I'm solving for a y, and I know my x is seven grams. So y equals m times x plus b. I'm solving for a y value, so I don't need to manipulate, I just need to plug in. So 2.25 okay, grapes per gram times seven grams, plus 122, which is how many grapes the plant had when it had no fertilizer. Okay, so we pull up our calculator here and punch that in. So 2.25 times 7 grams times, no, not that time, sorry, plus 122. All right, so I could expect to grow about 138 grapes because you wouldn't have three quarters of a grape unless you counted like a small grape to be three quarters of a grape. Okay, so about 138 grapes from seven grams of fertilizer. Okay. Now, if I wanna grow 300 grapes, and this is like kind of a, kind of a real world situation here. If I wanna grow 300 grapes, how much fertilizer should I use? So let's say like, you know, I've got a wine company that wants to buy all my grapes. I'm their supplier, okay? They need X number of grapes to make X number of bottles of wine. I know that then I need each plant to make 300 grapes. So I, I would have to calculate how much fertilizer I have to buy and thus use. So kind of a real world application, okay? Now, we know that this might not be entirely true in that if I give too much fertilizer, I could kill my plants, but we're just gonna kind of go with it. I want 300 grapes, that's a Y value, okay? I'm gonna calculate how much fertilizer, which is an X value. So Y equals M times X plus B. And I'm solving for X this time. So I gotta move B, so Y minus B, and then I'm gonna divide by M, that'll leave X by itself. All right, so now I'm gonna plug in my numbers. So that'll be 300 grapes minus 122, which is how many I get with no fertilizer, divided by the slope, which is 2.25 grapes per gram. Okay, so 300 minus 122, and again, I press equals here. Okay, so I, my calculator doesn't do order of operations and screw it up. Okay, now I'm going to divide that number by 2.25. Okay, so it says I need 79 grams of fertilizer on each plant. It's kind of a lot. And hopefully that wouldn't kill the plants or cost me too much money. All right. Okay, so back to this here, guys. Okay, so I've got my 
mass of grapes here now. Okay. So, or sorry, mass of fertilizer, sorry, 79.1 grams of fertilizer. All right, now I'm going to have you guys try a few questions from the uh, velocity versus time graph that we built of the two cars. Okay, so I'm going to put that up here. Okay, remember there's two data sets on here. Okay, how much faster will car one be going if both cars travel for 15 seconds? So I would need to figure out how fast they'd be going after 15 seconds and then you kind of see what goes on there. And then for number two, you need to think about what we talked about the other day when I was talking about um, how to calculate displacement from a velocity versus time graph. So you may have to look back in your notes for that one. All right, I'll have the sub uh, pause it here. Okay, and you guys can give those ones a try uh, and see how you see how you do. Remember, for number two, you're going to have to think about how we calculated displacement from a velocity versus time graph. All right, if you can just pause it here, please. Okay, so now we're gonna give this a try. We're gonna figure out how much faster car one will be going if they both travel for 15 seconds. So the first thing I gotta do is figure out how fast both cars will be going after 15 seconds. Okay, so velocity is on the y-axis, so I'm solving for y values for both cars. Okay, my equations are over here again. So I've got the velocity of car one is, um, or sorry, the acceleration of car one is five meters per second per second. So Okay, I'm going to use the same color here as the line, so there's no confusion. Okay, so I'm looking for their speed after 15 seconds. So 5 times 15 seconds, so this is m times x plus b. Okay, and b was 0 on these ones. All right, so, uh, and they both started at rest, so that's why b is 0. Okay, and when we punch that into our calculator, we should get about 75, I think. Five times 15 should be 75. Right. But like I say, I haven't had my coffee, so maybe I should not guess. I'm gonna say 75, but we'll probably confirm with the calculator here. All right, so each one is, yeah. All right, so five times 15, yeah, 75, good. Okay, now I gotta do the same thing for car number two. So car number two, okay, y equals, okay, and my slope was three meters per second per second. Okay, that was the acceleration. So I'm going to put that in here. Okay, and again, it's for 15 seconds. So three meters per second per second times 15 seconds plus zero. Okay, and three times 15 is 45. Okay, so after 15 seconds, car number two is going to be going 45 meters per second. All right, so if I want to figure out how much um, different or how much faster car one is going, I just subtract the two numbers. So 75 minus 45 should be 30 meters per second. All right, so car number one is 30 meters per second faster at that point than car two. All right, for question number two, okay, calculating displacement from a velocity versus time graph. Okay, this is where we did the shapes thing. Okay, now what we have to remember is that that shape or area thing is average velocity times time equals displacement. Right, that's really what we're doing here. Right, so okay, what we want to do is find the average velocity, which is that halfway point between the top and the bottom of our line. Right? We know it's increasing velocity from here to here. What we also have to do is figure out how fast is each car going at 10 seconds. Okay, That's that's something we need to know, the height of the triangle. If we're going to go base times height over 2, we need to know the height of the triangle at 10 seconds. Okay? Now, for, for this graph, that's easy simply because we can read it off the graph, but you can't always. Right? So average velocity is going to be height over 2 times the base, which is time. Okay, That's going to give us displacement. Okay, the base will be 10 seconds. All right, so before I can calculate, like I said, the displacement for car number two, I have to figure out how fast car number two is going after 10 seconds. In other words, I have to find the height of car two's triangle. That's this number here. Okay, so I'm gonna erase what I did there, and I'm gonna use a y equals mx plus b calculation to figure out 
Okay, I mean, we know it's 30, we can read it, but to show you how that's done, okay, three times 10, so the slope times 10 seconds plus zero. Okay, so this thing's the height of Y, or the height of the red triangle, car two, is 30 meters per second. So now I can do this calculation here. Okay, so I'm going to substitute 30 in for height, and I'm going to substitute 10 in for B, okay, for the base, and that'll give me how far that car travels after 10 seconds. Okay, so 30 over 2 times 10. Okay, because we said it's going for 10 seconds. So 15 times 10 is 150 meters. All right, so car two, which was the slower of the two, travels 150 meters. Now I have to do the same thing for the blue car, okay, for car number one. Okay, so y equals, and we know that the acceleration of that car was five meters per second per second times 10 seconds plus zero. Okay, so the final velocity or the height of that triangle is 50 meters per second. Now I can substitute 50 in for the height and use 10 for the base uh, again. Okay, so you can see up here, that's what I'm doing, right? I'm calculating the area of this triangle here. Okay, so I just calculated its height to be 50, which again, we could have read off the graph, but it's important to see how that's done. Okay, so 50 over 2 times 10. So 25 times 10 is 250 meters. So obviously the displacement of the faster car is quite a bit greater because it's moving faster. All right. All right, we're going to leave it at that. What you guys are going to do now is that you are going to work on the graphing sheets from yesterday, uh, or sorry, from uh, Friday, uh, the figure one or sorry, the, uh, the ones from page 17 to 21, okay, where you had all the, uh, the graphs and you were answering some questions about those graphs. That's what you guys are working on for the rest of the period here. Remember that tomorrow, everybody needs to bring a set of earbuds or headphones so that you can watch the podcast of the lab on your own Chromebook. That way you can work at your own pace. You don't have to worry about keeping up with me like you did today. And okay, so everybody tomorrow is going to bring their own set of earbuds and headphones so that they can... Uh, work on the lab on their own pace because I'm going to have the I'm going to record the measurements the data all of that you're going to fill it all in at your own pace and complete the lab report okay all right sorry guys again that I'm not there uh, I apologize for that I'm hoping that this is going to change soon that my son will be uh, feeling better uh, and coming home soon okay so um, hope you guys have a good day and uh, I'll see you later <laughs>